We are not cowgirls, although we had that ambition. We are writers. Um, Betty Joyce Nash is also a journalist, and I'm an editor. Guns turned up in our stories, and we learned to shoot. We found out that fictional guns are even harder to handle. Guns' power and not their politics intrigues us. They are everywhere. They are intertwined with our national history. Without guns, there's no America. Lexington and Concord, the Civil War in the West, no matter how you feel about them, needed guns to exist. Our culture from childhood features guns, and our language is loaded. What's your first gun memory? Mishandled firearms kill stories, too. Great American gun stories are rare. By 2012, we'd found the best. Wonderful work by Annie Prue, Bonnie Jo Campbell, John Edgar Wideman, Jim Tomlinson, Rick DeMarinas, and Pinckney Benedict. We had a great idea we'd build an anthology. All of them offered their stories. Almost 100 other writers answered our call. We thought it would be reflective, quiet work, but we'd set something very different in motion. In 2014, the Virginia Center for the Creative Arts gave us a residency. We read and chose. That really was our last quiet moment. When we finished, we had a manuscript. Another VCCA artist, Mary Mazziotti, offered us her paintings from Goddess Goes West. We, we had a manuscript. We named the manuscript Lock and Load. Now we needed a publisher. We wrote up what Lock and Load was and who was in it, who'd read it, and we headed for a national writers' convention. We got some business cards because that way we knew it would exist. Here's the book fair. Hundreds of small and university presses. We went from booth to booth asking anybody interested, and if they weren't interested, we asked them who might be. Four presses wanted to consider it. One was the award-winning University of New Mexico Press. Their books, like these catalogs, are beautiful. They get 1,500 book proposals a year. They consider fewer than 10%, and they wanted to consider ours. On the other hand, they publish fewer than half of those considered. They wanted a sample, which meant editing the manuscript. Editing, as even some writers don't realize, is a conversation. An editor flags and changes what's inaccurate or ungrammatical, but mainly she suggests or she wonders. Her loyalty is to the reader. Her job is to help the work speak clearly, correctly, and beautifully. Her questions, called queries, help it become its best self. And you can see here some of the questions in the margin. Writers don't always appreciate editors' efforts. Sometimes they argue. We told our writers we'd hired editors. <laughs> they were imaginary. We never gave their names. Meet Lakshmi, an Oxford grad who knows English better than the English, and Mavis, who knows she's right. The editor consults reference books for sticky questions of spelling, compounding, and punctuation. She lists and discusses her queries in an informative, agreeable memo that's firm when necessary. Through several rounds, each time flagging, she, she um, keeps, she asks, I like color so my flags are bright. Past anthologies in the past were about war or hunting. Men, some of them dead, wrote the stories, and men mostly fired the guns. But women writers had plenty to say about guns. They wrote more than half of Lock and Load's stories, not because we had a quota, because we wanted and found the best. The Madonna of Loose Ends became our patron saint. While we edited the manuscript all these times, we also secured the rights. Editing and tying up rights took two years. Now it was 2016. That fine print you never read took hours to collect and double check. We drafted permission forms. Some stories copyright wording was prescribed by contract, which meant long, complex email exchanges with writers, agents, and publishers. 
Next, we continue the editorial conversation with UNM Press. We listed and explained our own editing decisions. We answered their queries, and we worked with them setting our deadlines to meet their schedule, which took us into 2017. On the right, you see all the compounding decisions and the capitalization decisions. These are proofs. They are two pages wide. They look as the finished book will look. As you see, mistakes and inconsistencies remain all eventually discovered and corrected, probably. <laughs> Last fall, five years and countless hours after what seemed like a good idea, lock and load armed fiction met its mothers. The cover image was arresting. The book itself was beautifully produced. There it is. By then, we knew what to tell people about our beautiful baby. We've been doing that since, in New York, Baltimore, DC, Richmond, Charlottesville, Greensboro, Chicago, and now Asheville. And we're just getting started. Kentucky and Ohio are this fall, and we're still adding places to talk about this book. Plus, after all this work, we sometimes get cake. Thank you.